Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this regamers.com video, we're going to once again focus on AMD News. We just cannot seem to get away from this company at the moment because they're putting out so many different products. The rumor mill is absolutely going nuts, and today is no exception. We're going to talk about Ryzen 5, the performance, at least according to AMD. They've released a few benchmarks. 2933 MHz RAM on Ryzen. AMD have been working on that as well as a lot of news concerning their graphics cards. This stuff is not so much official, but it might as well bloody well be, because we have some leaked information concerning the RX 500 series, as well as a couple of Vega images. But we'll get into that in just a moment. I also want to quickly address viewers, regular viewers. Um, a number of you, of course, have been messaging me to do a couple of tests regarding Ryzen. Uh, that would be everything from trying out Fred Lasso, to disabling SMT and also trying out different core configurations. So at the moment I have done the core configuration benchmarks minus the actual synthetics. So I still need to run Cinebench and a few other benchmarks for different configurations of cores. But I've gone through four, six and eight. So I've got all the game benchmarks done on those. Um, so that stuff is going to be out tomorrow with any luck. And then Probably I'll start working on the Fred Lasso stuff and also optimizing performance with Ryzen because a number of you have messaged me asking what they need to do if they're building a new Ryzen rig. So I'll talk about that as well. And then, of course, I need to kind of stop producing that stuff for a while while I finish off a lot of the, uh, well, reviews we're working on. But anyway, that's enough of all of that. Let's talk about Ryzen 5, shall we? Seems like a pretty good idea since AMD are focused very much upon it. We're going to see these processors launch next month in April 11th and these CPUs of course start at the 1600X which is $250 US dollars and go all the way down with the cheapest being $170 US dollars. Now the most expensive gets you 4 gigahertz with 12 threads, that's thanks to 6 cores, while the cheapest is 4 cores 8 threads with only a 3.4 gigahertz clock. That is of course turboing. In my opinion, and I've said it you know, a dozen times now, I personally believe the best value of these chips is the 1600X by a lot, just, just by a massive margin. I was going to say uh, 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 quite a margin. It's actually a ginormous margin. I believe these chips are the best value. Um, just simply because I think the 1600 is just way too close to it in price. And yes, they're very similar chips, but 400 megahertz, I'd rather have that guaranteed extra clock speed. And we don't know, of course, the quality of the silicon of the Ryzen 5. So if you're an early adopter, I'd much rather buy the 1600X. I think the 1500X is way too close a price to the 1600 to lose out on those tasty, tasty, tasty additional four, um, sorry, two cores and uh, four threads. Anyway, AMD have also released a couple of benchmarks once again using the obligatory Cinebench where they pitted the CPU against the 7600K. Guess which one won, people? Yep, that's right, the Ryzen uh, 5, of course, simply because it has those additional threads and calls available to it. AMD are not necessarily picking on the 7600K because it's an easy target, but simply because it's close to their pricing of the 1600X. It's within about 10 US dollars. Obviously, your retailers may vary. It's technically would be fairer to put it against something like a 5820K, I guess, in terms of thread and core count. But once again, we're not focusing on that. They're focusing instead upon pricing. I think that this CPU, if you're doing mostly gaming, but you also want to be somewhat future-proof just in case DX12 really starts pushing the additional threads, or if you're doing streaming now, or perhaps doing a little bit of photo editing, or even quite a lot of photo editing, to be fair, the 1600X should be absolutely ample for your needs in the not-too-distant future. Oh, and in addition to all of that, AMD have confirmed that they are working on the very requested um, feature of Ryzen supporting faster memory clocks. Now, Right now, Ryzen definitely supports 2133 DDR4, and you can get it working on 2400 fairly frequently. I can get it running on my board, which is an Asus X370 Prime. However, sometimes it's a bit flaky, and sometimes it's less stable. So sometimes it will perhaps randomly lock up or crash. And most of this is BIOS related, as I've said a dozen times over. The story goes from one anonymous motherboard vendor 
that AMD just were not as far along in development of the BIOS as what they should have been, and they didn't support them as much as they should have. Now, whether you want to believe that particular motherboard vendor or not, that's totally up to you. But regardless of that, AMD have put out a couple of benchmarks, or rather one benchmark to be more accurate, which is F1 2016. And they've shown the difference in increasing the memory clocks to 2933 megahertz to be around 16 frames per second. Bear in mind that that seems to be about, you know, between 8 to 12% difference in performance, I'm going to assume based upon different games. They were running um, F1, which is hitting around 100 frames a second, 116 frames a second, I think, from memory of the video. So that's still pretty impressive. And if obviously other games scale like that, if you're running fast memory kits, then that's obviously going to be quite the bonus for you. Now let's instead focus upon RX 500. So the RX 500 series, we've known quite a bit about the CPUs, uh, sorry, the GPUs for some time now. Essentially though, it appears that these are basically, well, Polaris. <laughs> Non-surprise. So what it does appear is that we have a couple of them. They are either the 58, the 50, uh, I'm sorry, the 580s, the 570s, and of course the 560s. The device IDs are very damn close to the uh, current Polaris lineup. The rumor tells us, however, that the 580 in particular has almost 100 megahertz advantage in terms of core clock, though I think memory clocks are identical. Is that going to tempt you? Well, probably not really. It's probably just going to make you think, eh, if you've already got the, let's say, 480. If you're on the fence, however, then it's perhaps more tempting, or this could be looked at another way. It will help to further um, compete against the GTX 1060. Now, various driver revisions have definitely shook up the performance between the GTX 1060 and the RX 480. I don't have a 1060 to do a lot of testing with, if I'm totally honest. However, my understanding is that the early drivers for the 1060 versus 480 put the 1060 in the lead. However, this is now not reversed as such, but the 480 is much more competitive and in some games does actually have the lead over the 1060. So perhaps an additional, just slightly under 100 megahertz from the core will lead AMD to victory or at least a more comfortable margin of uh, competitiveness. I don't know if that made any sense, but I was going with it at that point. So one thing I did forget to mention yesterday is the fact that there was a technology summit being held in Beijing, China. And this is known as the AMD Technology Summit 2017. And it appears that we do have a couple of leaked images of Vega. Now, we don't know a huge amount about this because quite frankly the images are titchy, but it appears that someone from Chip Hell, at least, has posted these uh, images. And you can see that, well, it's primarily a backplate. It does look rather nice, however, there is a Radeon Vega logo, as well as, of course, the Radeon logo on the side. It doesn't really show us much other than, well, it's a graphics card, but that's why I've just kind of thrown it at the end of this video, because, eh, it's kind of cool looking, and I, I don't mind the, the logo, if I'm honest, but... Ultimately, it doesn't exactly tell us the performance of the GPU now, does it? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.